one item and I actually framed it with titanic wood decking. Can you see the wood decking around there? Oh, oh yes, I can. Yes. That's actually real wood decking from the from the movie, of course. And and so it's all framed up and it's just I I, I don't think I'll ever ever sell that. Somebody offered me ten thousand bucks for it like ten years ago. I said, you know, and I and I didn't take it. And and I won't. And I, I just that's one thing that I just cannot sell. It's just never replace it. I can replace the cups and things and a lot of the portholes and stuff and Titanic Talk with Nelson Aspen and Alexandra Boyd. Here we feature stories from the independent documentary Ship of Dreams Titanic Movie Diaries and everything else to do with the iconic ship. From James Cameron's epic groundbreaking movie to the history and legacy of Titanic herself. Actors, historians, authors, descendants and fans come here to talk about Titanic. This is your first class ticket to everything aboard the Ship of Dreams. My name is Nelson Aspen and you're back for another episode of Titanic Talk. Uh, now, as you probably know by now, if you've listened to other episodes, uh, this entire podcast was created as a companion piece to Alexandra's beautiful documentary, Ship of Dreams, Titanic Movie Diaries. And... I don't think we could have a more perfect guest to talk about the Titanic movie than our guest today. Alexandra, please introduce our guest and tell us how you found him. Well, I just I just love our community and I love Titanic and I kind of love the Internet today because David <laughs> Condon is a chap who we will get to talk to today, who I found because I think everybody knows that if there was one piece of Titanic memorabilia or prop edge that I would like, it's the little white star line weighted menu holder. And I was in some sort of rabbit hole the other day and <laughs> up popped eBay and all these Titanic props. And I was like, who's got all these Titanic? 25, 26 years later, somebody's still got all these Titanic props. And I discovered it was Dave. They did, he doesn't have one of my menu holders, but he's going to look out for one of me. Not yet. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we started chatting, as you do, and he started sharing not just his images of pieces he's collected and, and let's say, sold over the years. He's a broker for, for people like Zach Douglas, who people know very well because of Ship of Dreams, and and other avid collectors, not just of, of Titanic memorabilia and props, but of, of sports memorabilia and all sorts of things. He's an absolute expert in his field, and I can't wait for him to tell us some of his stories and show us some of his <laughs> images. Dave, welcome to Titanic Talk. Yay! Hello, guys. How are you? Hi, Alexandra. Hi, Nelson. Wait. We're, hey. we're doing really well. And and now we can see you. I am going to point out for those of us, those people just on audio that you have some amazing pieces behind you. I can see some model pieces. I can see some luggage. I can see a flopped crate with the signage flopped because of the day we got on the or the days we got on the ship. They had to turn everything to mirror. I see you've got the top of a I think a caryatid from first class yes, the yes. column tops and you've got you've got leonardo dicaprio's door <laughs> door yes we all have that. those blue Dave, where cabinets. where are you where are you coming from i'm in orange county california southern california all right so and is that is that where you warehouse all of this stuff um well i used to live in vegas and i had a big warehouse in vegas then we moved to was there for 20 something years and we moved back to california my wife's a teacher and um, as soon as my son turned 18, 19 and into college and sits, you know, there and, and whatever, we, we would come back here. So we're here now. I've been here for about seven. I grew up actually in Orange County and I've been here now for two, seven years now. I guess. You look like a California boy. All, you know, you, 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 must... you look like you should be surfing or, you know, I doing wish. a toothpaste commercial or something like that. <laughs> As a mad collector of the of, of, of things, I'm just interested in your origin story as it pertains to Titanic, the film. Okay, you guys you ready? Yeah. <laughs> so how I started, I, I've been, actually when I was 19, I opened up um, the baseball card shop and I collected baseball cards when I was Little League. And so I, that's kind of how I started. And I opened up a card shop when I was 19 
and started doing autographs and little little sports memorabilia, mostly baseball cards. So I did that for six, seven years. And in the memorabilia, the the, the movie props kind of started, you know, it's kind of on one one deal there. And it's it just kind of graduated and just kind of, you know, just escalated and just and here I am today. But how I started with with Titanic, I I, I wasn't I, I I wasn't, I'm not going to sit here and say I was a huge fan of Titanic. I was interested in the real Titanic, right? A little bit, not not crazy. But, and I had never even heard of the movie Titanic. So I'm at a Hollywood collector show, just looking for autographs, looking for cool stuff that I could buy and resell. And I'm a collector too, unfortunately, because that's not very good to do when you're when you're trying to sell stuff too, right? <laughs> so I'm at a Hollywood show and, um, and I'm walking and seeing, I see a little, go down this, around this corner here and I, I look and I see this little sign, $2,500 sold. And it was a little face plate, like, like a furniture dresser plate thing. I don't know. It was like this little face plate thing, 2,500 bucks sold. I go, what, what is going on? What's this? So the guy says, well, this is supposed to be a great movie, Titanic and this and that. And so, wow, where did you get this? And I'm all interested now. Right. And he goes, well, so he told me that he bought it from a guy that was, um, I guess he was in construction on the Titanic. He worked on the set or whatever. And so he told me, I asked, well, where's, this, where's the movie set? Where can I get some of this stuff, right? And um, he, he told me it was in Rosarito Beach, you know, Mexico. And, and I said, wow, is there anything? Can I get some stuff? Can I, you know, whatever. And he goes, he goes, well, I go, just tell me where the movie set is. And I'll go from there, right? So he showed me this picture. Can you guys see it? A little picture here. You guys yeah, yeah. that, Alexandra. That's the movie set. Uh, 30 years or 28 years ago, whatever. And he showed not this actual page, but he showed me a picture of this little white. You see this little white thing right here. You remember that Alexander right in the right in front of the studios. Can you guys see it a little bit? Uh, we'll, we'll Alexander will make sure all of the, all these pictures okay. are on the YouTube okay. version. So if, you're, if, if you guys are just listening to the, uh, to the audio, check out this episode on YouTube as well. So he told me go 25 miles past the border and, and you're going to run right into it. I, all I have, I've been to Tijuana back in my, you know, back in my high school days, and I had no idea where I'm going. Rosario, all I heard is Rosario. So anyway, get in my, I get in my car that freaking day, right? And I, I'm, I'm on a mission. I, I hit in my car. It's two o'clock in the morning, and I, I get in my truck. I start driving and get to the border, cross the border. I'm looking at my mileage. Okay, I have 25 miles. Start looking for, you know, this white statue thing. So. I, I, I think I think I'm getting close and I, I see it. I go, oh my God, is this it? Oh my God, I can't believe it. I found it. So I, I see this statue. I go on the side, I'm looking around, is this the movie set? And I go on the side of the, the, the set and I go down this dirt road. I see like a little pony wall, like a little two foot wall thing. I'm thinking, man, should I I think this is the set? Should I go like step over this thing and look? And and so I get up the north pouring down rain. Uh I, I, I probably at somewhere where I'm not supposed to be, right? Climb over the, the wall, and I'm here. I am on the set, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" Well, within five, I'm looking around for anything I could find. Within two or three minutes, I hear this click, 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 click. And I go, "Oh my god, what is going on here?" It was pitch black, and I'm I look up, and I have about ten federales around uh -oh. me with guns on my head. <laughs> Said, are you, you got this is how I'm gonna die. I mean, come on, I I I, I, I couldn't believe it. So I'm just I all see now to Breaking Bad, the Titanic version. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I'm. Anyways, they're talking for ten minutes. They're going back and forth. What is this? I hear Gringo and Loco and this and that. And so he, they, they, somehow they let. I just said, you know, I'm just gathering firewood for my family. I'm cold. I live right down the street. So I'm just make whatever coming in my head, right? And they let me go. I go back over the wall. Get in my truck. I'm like crying. I, I'm oh, no. I can't believe this is happening to me. I didn't find a thing. I think, should I just go back home or, or what? I, I pull on the side of the road. I gather my thoughts. I start driving a little bit, looking for a coffee place open. And now it's like, you know, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Nothing's open, of course. So I'm driving a little bit. And unbelievably, I see a little freaking sign on the side of the road that says, out of all this happened, Nelson, Titanic movie props for sale. <laughs> after all, what? yeah, after all that. So that's how my career in Titanic started. So I waited till about, about seven o'clock in the morning, knocked on this guy's door. It was a trailer. And I'm just saying, Titanic props. 
I, I'm here. I'll buy anything you have. And didn't speak any English, but came outside and, and he said, you know, I got this and that. Walked in his back. I, I'm, I'm seeing portholes. I'm seeing, mind you, I just saw a little dresser plate thing, little tiny plate that just sold for 2,500 bucks. Thinking, oh my God, I just hit the. You knew you'd hit gold. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, this is it. And that's how I started. And that's, and one thing led to another. Met him. I, you know, I, I met someone else. He led me to somebody. I'm, I, I'm, you know, I'm going there every two to three days. What year was this? This was 19, I want to say 97, maybe. It was, it was like right when the movie came out. The movie came out in 97, right? So it had to have been like right in that time. I don't so the, so the set, actually, the, the studio would not have been titanic anymore. It would have gone on to whatever the next was. They were dismantling. Yeah. They were probably dismantling, still dismantling that huge reproduction of the ship that you okay, saw there. And okay. in fact, um, Judy and Ellen are two eminent extras who are who feature in Ship of Dreams and who've been on this podcast. They did a bit of dumpster diving themselves. They said because the dumpsters were just full of stuff that like any movie set it's been shot and we're done move on to the next thing they just literally throw it away but some of those guys somehow but they were also probably very useful building materials that they could repurpose talk a bit about some of the window frames and doors that you found actually in built into people's houses the so, repurposing things are, are fascinating amazing. to me i don't think a lot of the collectors even know about that how, how, how this all came about it's amazing so I guess James, from what I heard, James Cameron hired this company to come to the set and remove the ship, right? Three quarter scale to the real Titanic. So I'm sure, you know, Alexander is well aware of this, but it, so a company came out, took the ship off, I guess, and dumped it illegally on somebody's property. Like it was, like, I don't know, five or six acres. And <laughs> this guy was gone at the time. It was a vacant lot. It was probably 10 minutes outside of where the set was. And this guy comes back, drives up to his, and, and what, what, what's this? I've got all this wood and, and windows and, and pieces. Of, <laughs> I he had no idea what it was. What's this lifeboat doing in my yard? <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I don't know what lifeboat was. That would have been something else. But yeah, just a, bunch of, just a bunch of wood and scrap, and he didn't have no idea. Well, the next day he figured out what it was. He, he, was, he was a big dude. He was, a, he was well known in, in, as a real estate developer and all that. So he gets on the news, calls the local TV. And they did a little thing on him. And he said, anybody that wants to come get all this stuff off my property, come get it for free. Okay. That, and wow. that's how all the locals got into the, into the props. And that's how it's all divided up. So all the locals just went there with their trucks, whatever they had, piled them in and then took them to their farms or wherever they could pack it. And I was about two to three weeks. I missed that boat. I, I missed that. No pun intended. But I, I missed yes. that, that opportunity to get that. So everything. But they I weren't taking them. Dave, they weren't taking them to collect them. They were like, this is really great timber that I can yeah. repurpose. Alexander, the movie hasn't come out yet. Yeah. So nobody yeah. even knew. It. Nobody even knew. It was not, they don't know. It was just a bunch of wood. This Free is material. Yeah. Free material, firewood, building their houses, whatever. So I missed out on that. So I, so this guy that I, that I found on the side of the road, whatever, he, he, that he, that's what I'm saying. He started selling stuff to me and, and, this was going on for, I, I was going to Rosarito probably two to two, three times a week for, for two years. I was doing this year and a half, two so, years. It sounds like James Cameron. Do you even have the James Cameron director's chair, if I'm not mistaken? I, I'm not sure. I'm like pretty sure it was good, but it was something I did not get off the set myself. A lot of my, all my contacts now are from the set. They work there hundred percent golden, but that was one thing that I am not, positive about i'm pretty sure but i don't know <laughs> it's so also quite know. easy to just print up a director's chair back yeah but maybe he used different ones. ones you know maybe use a couple different ones at different scenes i don't know but yeah i, I i'm 95 percent sure it was real so i sold that off and the collector is as happy as can be he did research on it he thinks this is, it is as good as gold so yeah it's a pretty cool piece hey so. dave i'm curious as 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 a merchant yourself, since you since you broker these deals, I, I know you have the eBay page. Where do you where where do you work from? How how do people find you, and what are the most effective ways for you to sell? Do you do you go to auctions or shows, or is it all online? All, how, how does your business work? It's all online now, Nelson. And over the years, I've I've met 
I mean, just the most wonderful people in this business. And I mean, now I'm a Titan. I'm, I'm just a, a freak now. I'm, I'm more of a collector than a seller. I, I kind of just sell Titanic stuff just to support my habit, right? Of, of collecting my <laughs> items and what, you know, and I've met just the greatest people you could imagine. I mean, 25 years of this. I mean, you, you guys know Zach, of course, and <laughs> just a, a great guy. I mean, and he, he, he's been purchasing stuff from me, God, out of 10, out of 15 years, maybe. And he came out to my house and looked at my stuff in my office and he saw all my stuff and he was just going crazy. Maybe Alexander saw a video of that whole thing. He, he taped the whole thing, but pretty cool stuff. <laughs> it, it, so back to your question, Austin, I, I sell on eBay, but I don't, most of my clients, they just know who I am and they'll call me if they want something or if I need some money or whatever, I'll call them and, hey, I got this for sale now. Uh, so, you know, and Alexandra's waiting for her, uh, her menu I holder. Promise Alexand I'm going to get you a menu holder. I'm on a mission. I told you. I promise. I've seen them and I, I, I think I've had a couple of them sold them over the years, but. I, I saw an, an original one from the wreck, which I couldn't imagine owning. Uh, I'd be quite happy. I, I want the prop one, but the original one was like 600 pounds, which actually didn't, it sold for 600 pounds, which didn't seem very much for a, yeah. something that came from Titanic. Or maybe it was a White Star Line, Ocean Liner. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it, what, I didn't read it because I was too upset that I, I would want it. Oh, <laughs> What's the rarest thing do you think that you've come across either from your 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 forays into Rosarito and into the villages of Mexico where they're using reusing pieces of the set or what's something that you just never thought you would come across? Well, after a couple of years, it, it's kind of the same stuff. Decking, hall, portals were fantastic. That came maybe mm. a couple of months later, you know. So it's kind of always the same stuff, hull and just kind of the wood and just all those things. And so it was never anything really unique. I would say half the time I'd go there. I, I lived in Vegas at the time. It was a long drive and I'd get there and the guy wouldn't be there. It wouldn't show up. So I, I, I struck out, got zero, right? But one time, probably a year into this thing, I, I get there. My guy come, pulls up in a truck. He's got this unbelievable stained glass window. I, I just come and... I, I, I was beside myself. Couldn't believe it. Just a beautiful seven or eight feet tall, totally intact stained glass window. It was out in the smoking room. And that was probably my best piece I ever got. Um, did you sell it or did you keep it? I kept it for a while. And, you know, you know, things are slow. You got They you all have it. a price. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Has a price. I mean, Everything has a price. Really this remind, you remind me of like a... a um, a gold miner, like the guys that, you know, back in the early days of our country that were, you know, going out west and digging for gold or mining for oil or whatever it is. I mean, you re some days are good. Yeah, you know, just listening to you talk exactly. and, and and describe the ups and downs, but yeah. you're you know, you're a you're an a, an explorer. Tell the story of finding the piece of paneling in the tire shop. So I'm I'm driving down and, and I'm I'm driving down the road. And I see a tire shop, right? And this is this is crazy. True story. I go in there because my fr I have a low. I have my my tire is flat, like it's going flat. I see it on my screen. <laughs> and so I go in the nearest tire shop, and I get in there, and this guy, his entire wall is Molly Brown's stateroom wall. It's got the padding furniture, padding thing on there, the material on there. I, I'm saying, oh my God, this is this is I'll bet it shined up like a new penny. <laughs> I gotta get this. Nice, I, nice on, Nelson. I don't care what it's gonna cost me, I'm gonna get this sucker. I get in there and I'm thinking this guy, I mean, if I give him a couple thousand bucks, right, he's gonna go crazy. He's gonna take it, right? And I and I I said, I explained to him, hey, this is this is history. You've got it. This is any way you would sell this thing, right? He said, no, my whole building's going to come down. My, my roof is unstable. You know, and these guys don't speak real good English. So I'm trying to explain to them, listen, there's a Home Depot right down the road. I'll buy you all brand new wood. We'll redo it. it I'll bring a couple guys and we'll fix it up. It'll be good as new. So anyways, no, no good. No, no deal. He just I doesn't was, want the bother of it. It's not the money. It's just. And you know what? It's, and it really isn't to this. To now it's not. Now it's really <laughs> not a money thing because it's. I've developed so many cool, like, like just we'll go back to Zach, like recently, just a couple of weeks ago, actually, I, I, I'm in, in Mexico in my condo 
and I'm always treasure hunting. I'm always going. I'm always looking at houses and seeing if I can find something new. And so I, I have a meeting with with my guy. He said, Dave, I got a couple of things, and you might be interested. In whatever. Of course, I'm not going to turn anything down. Titanic. So he pulls up, and he's got this. He's got this material. It was oil stained, and and it was just just ugly. I couldn't even see really what it was at first, but I get it. And I said, Holy, holy smoke! This is the first class dining room tablecloth. And look, I see the little the little designs on it and stuff, you know. And and I and I get it. I'm holding this thing, and, and he goes, you can just he goes, how much you want for that, whatever. And it was it was like almost like a throw in to, to the deal, right? And immediately I thought of Zach. I said Zach is gonna die for this, right? <laughs> and he's and, got all the dishes he needs a tablecloth. I know, I know, I know he didn't have one either, and I've never even seen one in person. So anyway, thought of him, and and I I go home. I didn't want to tell him about it first because it was, it, I didn't know if I could even get it to to somewhat you can even see what it is right so i'm getting the oxy clean and, and trying to stay anyway after about 15 freaking washes it came out wonderful call zach and i, I we were we um based on each other and he i thought he was gonna have a freaking heart i couldn't believe it and it was <laughs> that right there just stories like that i have i can hear his voice right now can't yeah. you alex no, no. yes yes I have, go I have back many... to the guy go back to the guy how you got the paneling the molly brown paneling so, so i so i kept on going back to this guy and i said listen i mean so i i would just show face and listen i'm so interested if you ever decide to do it let me know and here's my phone number five years it took me and finally i get up there and it was my day he said all right dave it's time. Let's do it, right? And he he said, "Come back tomorrow and you can pick it up." I'm thinking, "Well, I'm not going to believe this until I see it." So, anyways, he cut the thing down for me. I didn't have to do a, a thing. He cut it down. He had his new wood, and I gave him some money for wood. And he had started construction already. The next morning, he had it all nicely laid out on the side there for me. And there it was. Got it. Now it's in Pittsburgh at a at a pretty cool museum, and the guy bought it for me over there. So. That's that story, but I've got a hundred of them, stories like that. But then, then I saw a photograph of a door with a porthole in it that had all been repainted. What did you do with that? Did you do like the, you know, like the Sistine Chapel where they take Q-tips and wash the, 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 the paint off? Another another story. The guy I'm I'm driving down and and I have I have a couple guys out there that actually are out there almost full time looking for stuff for me all, at all times. They they call me if they see something. I mean, most of the time you'll see my stuff comes that are incorporated in these homes. They'll take a door and they'll put it and use it as a front door, like a problem on that door. Beautiful with the nice porthole with the, you know, the ornate around the window and the portal and stuff. And it, and it's, it's sometimes it's painted like weird dolphins and stuff. And, and it's okay. Right. I, that's cool. I, so I, anyway, that, so I, I was able to take it out and, and take the hinges off and they have it all bolted in and then we go to Home Depot, we replace it with the, with another door, and there you go. That's nice final one, lifetime guarantee, final. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, What does your wife think of all of this? Do she, she, does she, does she, is, is, uh, how's her feng shui? Here, here, we are, here we are 20 something years ago, and that's in front of, the, of, of, of Baja Studios in Rosarito. We're, we're uh. doing the Titanic tour thing, so. No, she's not a, a huge fan, to be honest with what you. What does no. she collect? She does she collect anything? No, no, not really. No, she just no. She I, I I wish I could tell you a great story about that, but no, she she's kind of kind of over it. And, they, are, and, they either are or they aren't. My partner has not seen Titanic. I think he's the only place person on the planet who hasn't seen it, and now no. he just won't, so that he can say he's never seen it. Yeah, <laughs> he's seen the documentary though. He's seen yeah, the documentary I, more than like, yeah, that. Your documentary is wonderful. I, I've watched three quarters of it today, actually, and it, it's amazing. It's so what? I, I mean, not for my own ego, because thank you very much. But I'm always interested in people who are so connected to this film. Some of the feelings that you that are evoked when you hear those those people who were really there, who were really part of that that creative process what what kind of things come up for you when you when you see that or when they talk about walking onto the sets that you now have pieces of i, I want to hear the stories i mean I, I see you and you're you're and i see you in the documentary like you're you're i just can't believe that you saw see i'm a tight i'm a nut now I, i'm a huge fan now uh you know like for the last 20 years I, i'm i'm a nut and and like zach and he and when i look at you and you're seeing all this 
unbelievable stuff. And I, and I talk to people that have worked on the thing and I go nuts over, Oh, by the way, here you go here. Cheers. Oh, Cheers. it's tea cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> you've seen oh, like the real thing on the set, like working, you know, Kate holding in drink, whatever. And it's like, the stories just blow my mind. Cause I go crazy over one little cup, right. Or a porthole or whatever. And you've seen it all. And it's just, I, I, I wish, I wish I could have worked on that set or just, just see everybody. And I, and I will have to say, I will have to say, just listening to you uh, break down each piece like that. I, I know I was very, I was super fascinated by the layout of the table or, and, and the carpet and the, and the woven uh, chairs in the, in the sort of cafeteria at cafeteria, in the cafe area. And um, I've, I've told this story a couple of times on the podcast. Uh, when I sat at the captain's table, the other side of Bernard Hill was uh, Peter Lamont, who was the production designer, Oscar winning, He'd done James Bonds. He'd done a whole bunch of other James Cameron films. And of course, once he revealed himself to me, because he was dressed as the ship's captain and Jim always put him in costume and made him do something at some point, <laughs> um, because essentially his work had been done at that point. He was supervising. But can you imagine the months and months and months of research and building? And it was all down to him. Actually, it was all down to him. And then years later, his son became an art director and I was developing a film about the First World War and they had just done War Horse at uh, Leeston Studios in England. And <clears throat> my producer met with Peter's son and showed him these beautiful eight by 10 photographs of the trenches. So again, the same level of detail, the same attention of you know, stuff that you know, that particular cup that you have wasn't necessarily fully in a shot or fully used, but it was there as a huge part, you know, as a tiny part of the huge whole. So so my impression of being walking through that first class dining room and sitting down, looking at the table setting and looking at everybody dressed up as if it was 1912 on the last night of the Titanic, it it felt so real that it was it was surreal yeah that amazing. was the, the, you know and it all goes down to it starts with james cameron's vision then he finds somebody like peter lamont to to action it and then they find people to build it and then the costumes like the actors are just facilitators of this incredible incredibly creative endeavor and that that's the stuff that blows my mind the the enormity of it not i can't believe the detail that he that he used he could have he could have you know say pennies they're there i mean just the the mahogany hand railing and the he could have used regular these you know cheap wood or whatever and it was like that when i'm finding these props it, the detail and the materials that were used it just just blows me away well and that's why they last quality materials and you know when oh. i when I sold my house in Los Angeles and moved to New York, I had to downsize significantly. And I was a collector. I was telling Alexandra about this and I, I, yeah, I had to get rid of so much. And I kept saying to myself, never love something that can't love you back. And that made it easier to part with things. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to part with them, but I, I got good at it. What's an item or two that you just could never part with? Okay, well, this right behind me, can you see it? Alexandra, can you see it? Uh, what are the you white star line. A lot of lovely oh. things there. Hanging. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's big. This was hanging in the in the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. You see it? Oh, that where was it hanging? The poster yeah. in the gymnasium. Hanging in the gymnasium. There's only two. And there was this one, and there was like a, a, a roll map type thing on on. They were side by side. This is the only one that exists in the world. I've only seen this one. This huh. is one item, and I actually framed it with Titanic wood decking. Can you see the wood decking around wow. there? Oh yes, I can. Yes. That's actually real wood decking from the from the movie of course and and so it's all framed up and it's just i i, I don't think i'll ever ever sell that somebody offered me ten thousand bucks for it like 10 years ago i said no and i, and I didn't take it and and i won't and I, I just that's one thing that i just cannot sell it's just there's only one I never replace it i can replace the cups and things and a lot of portholes and stuff and but it's like uh that's my piece right there. I, this baby. might be a really awful question. And no, go ahead. Hit me like, up. We can we can cut it out if you don't want to answer it. Um, what's the most <laughs> expensive thing that you have found and sold? Maybe say what it is and say that's the actual number. 
Um, that stained glass window we got, uh, I think it ended up selling for twenty four thousand. Yeah. I didn't get that. For something, but, no, but yeah, yes, but that's what they I, I, mean, I, sold, I sold it and then they, they sold it. I heard they got like in the 20 yeah. something. Yeah. 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 And we did talk briefly about that pink sinking coat that I feel very much my my titaniacs, my friends who really know about this stuff. You know, I think you have to be really steeped in it. And 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 Zach and Ilka and Dale in particular are steeped in the costumes and the and the historical elements and the film's costumes. And there was quite a bit of back and forth about whether that's that coat that was being sold. It had a certificate, it had, you know, yes, this is screen used or may not have been screen used, but it was one of the coats that they would swap out and mm -hmm. it, it, it um, from my side it very much looked like it was a jay peterman reproduction yeah. which were beautiful and very well done but not a screen used coat and really ultimately whatever that coat sold for is what it's worth because it's always worth what somebody is prepared to pay right. for. as long as as long as it, as long as they know exactly what they're getting into i mean if it was sold as a, a, a used item which that, you know, then he got ripped off, obviously, and the item's not going to go for nearly as much as a Peterman or a Peter was great. Got great pieces. I collect, I've, I've got the, you know, of course, I've got the the, the Hardy Ocean and, and a couple other pieces, but film use prop replicas. It's a whole different, whole different ball game. But that's the so now field too, isn't it? So yeah, you that, have to you have the to certification like process or people who genuinely collect who know. Exactly. Exactly. That and that it comes down to that are people that you trust. I mean, I I've, I've gotten burned. I thought I was buying, you know, original from the real Titanic grand staircase pieces, you know, like a little tiny piece like this big, you know, $10,000, right? And I traded and did this and I got enough things and, and we did the trade and I got it and I was excited and then I find out it's probably not even real. So I, I and I'm not an expert on the real Titanic, but I am on movie props. I I I I'll put my name behind something, and it's, it's as good as gold. Well, my that's the age-old cliche of let the buyer beware. But we yeah. know that you know you're doing your due diligence. And exactly. tell us now, because we're going to have to wrap this up. But tell us, Dave, where what where we find you, and we'll we'll put it up, uh, of course, on the website as well. Oh, but just nice. tell interested folks. That's nice, you Nelson. And I, I'll tell you, I, I, this is not why I'm doing this at all. I, I, I don't want to really. You're talk. a titaniac like us. No, no, but I, 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 it doesn't I'm, matter that you're here. We know I, the reasons. I, I but everybody's going to want to get in touch with you. I, I, well, I'm, I, I'm on eBay, and I have it. It's, it's Titanic Dave, number four Titanic letter Dave. U. Yeah, Titanic Fantastic. Dave, number four letter U, and that, that's my, that's my eBay site. But, you know, I don't put all my really great stuff on there. I, pu I put decent stuff on there, but. Most of my clients are from Canada and Australia and the UK and just Germany and just all over the world I've met. That's why I do this now, really. I mean, I, I, I honest to God, I do. And it's stories like Zach and stories like I just sold a piece to a guy and, and he didn't have a whole lot of money. And it's like, you know, he scraped up and I held it for him. A wicker chair, by the way. I had a wicker chair and had two of them. And, and it was just, he got it. He calls me up. Oh my God, Dave. <laughs> and I'm just right now, just thinking. Of, that's why I do it, and it, it's it's just it, honestly, God, I know that sounds kind of hokey, and but it for the love. We're all, I mean, you know, what we're making on this podcast, you know, we're we're not <laughs> yeah. just in it for the money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just going back to why we started the film, I had all those diaries, and they sit, felt like they were just collecting dust in my computer. They've been transferred to every computer I'd ever upgraded to. And I knew, still knew so many of us. Mm -hmm. And I just had this idea, would you sit down and read your diary? And then at the same time, it dovetailed into getting to know the Titaniacs on, on, uh, on Instagram, mostly on Instagram. And it just seemed to make this beautiful balance of where we are 25 years later, completely in love with the film or with films or what films do to us. You know, now I'm a filmmaker. I don't even act anymore because I'm just so taken up with telling stories. And if they're true stories, you know, you know, stories about real people, all the better for me. So Trust as me, we completed the film and Nelson and I were like, well, we can talk, let's Titanic talk. And here we are, we're in like, you know, the 40th <laughs> episode 
of of, really? of just talking about about this ship. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to just make sure that we say thank you, and uh, we'll see you on eBay. And uh, when you when we're all in the same city, we'll get together and do the real thing. You guys ever want to talk more? Just give me a call, Alexander. You want to come over and, and Nelson? We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have, have a tea over. party. <laughs> <laughs> was there? Wait, though, just if you could do it in two minutes. Was there one more thing you wanted to say, Dave? This guy, one of my customers, painted this. I mean, drew this. He blew that. Was it yeah. Dale? Is it Dale's? No, 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 no. No, a guy, a guy in, in in the Midwest. But he he drew this for me. Incredible. <laughs> it's the Kate. It's for those of you who can't so see what, what we're seeing. That's the Kate Winslet sketch, a reproduction yeah. of the James Cameron sketch of Kate Winslet that uh, is DiCaprio's I'm, character sketch. Just, I'm just, I just, I just met so many cool people, and I, and I, I yeah. this is why I do it now. And like I said, it's just, it's not a money thing for me anymore. I mean, of course, everything is for sale, right? But, but. I'm in it 90% just because of reactions I get from Zach and, and these other <laughs> It just makes my job just great. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it really it is fun. It you really don't get fun. this in the Barbie community. <laughs> Not yet. Oh my God. Can you imagine people walking, you know, dive, dumpster diving for all that pink stuff? It's got to have gone oh, one somewhere. One more thing, one more thing I got to tell you real quick. So I'm at, so a guy bought something from me. I drive out there, I give him the stuff and he's all excited. And then he starts telling me that he's like one of the biggest real titanic collectors in the world so oh, okay well really and, and i i've heard this before right and so anyways he, i go in the back room he's showing me stuff that i am blows my mind he pulls out an original titanic deck chair that sells for you know five hundred thousand dollars he bring me take it out of the crate we bring it out on his living room floor he's i'm sitting in it you know and this and that and, uh, that's i love what i do right i mean this is yeah. i wake up one morning delivering something and here I am sitting on a, a real Titanic. I'm a very rich person who can afford a debt. Yeah, $500,000. He had two of them and he had, he had a bunch wow. and now he, he rents out his, his stuff to museums all over the world and Titanic exhibits and it's and, and he's a he, and he doesn't sell. He collects, he rents his stuff out, but he's a big time collector. And it's just... If you've enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review. And if you'd like to hear more podcasts like this, hit the subscribe button. For information on where you can see Ship of Dreams Titanic Movie Diaries, go to shipofdreamsfilm.com. Titanic Talk is a production of Ship of Dreams Film Limited. To celebrate Season 2 of Titanic Talk, we've launched a line of Titanic Talk merch. A cap, a mug, a tote a t-shirt or a hoodie, you'll be sure to find a unique gift for the Titaniac in your life. Look for the link in the notes and on Instagram or go to bit.ly forward slash Titanic Talk Shop. And Nelson has a new book out. Dancing Between the Raindrops is a steamy page turner full of all the tales Nelson can still remember from New York City in the 1980s. It's a coming-of-age story about friends in the era of big hair, padded shoulders, and punk rock. Dancing Between the Raindrops is available on Amazon or ask for it at your local bookstore.